Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to show you a video on how I was able to make a flat front foot pad for a GT in a really easy way. Let's go ahead and take out the One Tail Flat by Craft and Ride. It's a great foundation to build this upon. You can use it for the back or you can do like I'm doing and put a sensor on it, mod it to fit the front. You see it comes with an instruction sheet here. Go ahead and keep that. That will help you when the first time you got to put it on. You want to put the screws in the correct order so everything fits nice and flush. Check out those flat sides. This one is flat all the way across so you don't have any of those sharp edges digging into your heel or the ball of your foot. This is great for cruising around town, hitting bonks, hitting drops, doing some tricks. Love it for all of those. So let's start by removing the grip tape that comes on there because we're going to need to work on this surface. If you want to retain this grip tape to use after you're done, uh, just use something with a backing like a, an older package of grip tape or some wax paper if you have any of that in the pantry. That's what I'm going to use. And you just want to keep that safe until you're done with the project. Now you want to remove any of the adhesive left behind from the grip tape so you're working with a nice clean surface. And it's dealer's choice on whatever adhesive remover you want to use. Now you want to remove the adhesive remover with an alcohol-based cleaner. Now you need to take a donor pad or another front pad and mark where the cutouts are for the light bar. Right here I'm just taking a razor blade to highlight where I put the mark because uh, I'm going to be removing this piece of wood. Let's measure it and see how deep it needs to be. I'm using a micrometer, so I'm gonna make a mark here, and that's how much I need to take away. Now take a small drill bit and mark the corners where those intersections are, because that's gonna be your left and right boundaries for the light bar cutout. Then you wanna compare with your donor pad. Always just make sure you're not cutting too much away. A little pro tip, if you're about to drill through your pad and you don't wanna drill through your work surface, just go ahead and clamp a wood block underneath so when you drill through, you're only going into the wood block. Now we need to remove all that extra wood that's in the way. And I just grabbed my router that I haven't used in years and I'm just freehanding this. So use whatever you have available to you, a file, a bunch of sandpaper and time, uh, whatever you got. Once you've made it most of the way, you can start cleaning it up with sandpaper and files. Uh, you want to constantly check to see if you are done by using the donor pad as a comparison. Alright, that's enough for now. Let's uh, compare these two. All the thread holes line up perfectly. Everything looks good. Now we have to worry about this track where the sensor pad cable was formerly ran. We're going to have to make our own little path for that, uh, but first we need to make the penetration. So measure and compare, then mark where you're going to have these penetrations come through. You want it to sit naturally without putting any sort of kinks in the cabling. So having it in the same spot is ideal. I'm going to measure from a couple angles here so I know I'm in the right spot. Then I'm going to take my drill bit out again, put a block behind it so I don't drill into my table. And we're going to make a couple holes on the left and right. And then I'll just take the drill bit and just waller it out by moving side to side while the drill's running. Now let's do a little fit test to see if the cable head's going to squeeze through the hole we made or if we're going to need to enlarge it. All right, so that went in nicely. Uh, we're gonna smooth that up with a file in here in just a minute, but just wanna make sure everything fits. Uh, you wanna find a good center for this sensor pad, and there's no kinks in it. It just sits nice and flat on there like it should. Now let's do the cable. We're gonna need to attach this and then reseal it with the hot glue. And it comes with a little plastic clip for the pre-manufactured foot pads. Just retain that in case you want to go back to your other foot pad. Uh, we're not going to use it on this project. We're instead just going to staple it in place in one spot and use the adhesion of the hot glue to take care of that.
Now the bottom side of the sensor pad where we removed it from the stock pad, you're gonna need to clean up all of that leftover adhesive, any little plastic pieces, any glue that you've used before to seal your foot pad. Just go ahead and scrape and remove all of that. I'm just using acetone because I've got some hard work to do. Now we need to remove the old front foot pad and the bumper so we can do a fit test with that new one. Now if you're going to use that little included wrench for the cable connector, look, just one tiny little turn. That is it. Same for putting it back on. If you do any more than that, you might break your connector right off. Looks like I need to make a little bit more room around the light bar for it to fit nicely. So let's go back to reworking that. And it looks like this one fits a little better this time. So check out these screw holes. You wanna make sure they line up right. You can see straight through the rail if you're doing it right. And if you read the instructions, you know that it comes with a little bag containing two longer screws. Those are needed right here to hold the front of the foot pad to the bumper. Don't lose those. All right, it seems to fit. So let's go ahead and clean it up and move on to the next steps. Here's a little something that's going to save you some time and keep your hands free from getting covered in the adhesive. Uh, go ahead and take a zip tie and pre-thread it through the penetration and we're going to hot glue the tip of that onto the sensor cable block. Let's go ahead and give this a cleaning real quick, remove any adhesive remover, sawdust, fingerprints, whatever. Alright, now this is going to get hot glued to the black connector piece there. For the adhesive, I'm just going to use a 3M Super 77. This works just fine. I haven't had any problems with it, but you want to make sure that you are spraying with a clean nozzle. Uh, mine was not clean, so I'm glad I did a little test spray. Uh, let's clean it up and make sure it sprays clean now. I'm going to put a little coat, nice even coat all over this. You see how I've got cardboard in the back so I don't spray it all over my toolbox. Here's where that zip tie is going to come in handy. You're going to be able to pull it from the other side of the foot pad rather than sticking your hand in between the two surfaces and getting an adhesive all over your knuckles. You want to work quickly but smooth. You don't have a lot of time before the adhesive remover dries, but it's not permanent the moment it touches. You can take a moment to adjust it. Once you find a good position, you're going to want to work from the center outward and push any air bubbles out. Uh, you see how I'm using this pattern right here, just sort of using pressure from the center all the way out. Uh, do your best to do the same. If you get any air bubbles, you could trap a little pressure inside of there that could give you a ghosting issue in the future. So take your time, do some good work here. Now you can just peel off that zip tie from the cable connector and we're going to connect it to the rest of the cable and we're going to work that glue. We're going to staple everything down in place. Um, make sure that you don't pierce the cable. You line up your cable right in the center of your staple and I'm just using a quarter inch deep one so it's not really even holding on that hard. I've got my heat gun here pre-melting all of that glue and I'm going to massage it into the grains of the wood with a little cheap hot glue gun and fill in any gaps if I need any more. Uh, right here, I'm just scraping everything down, checking the temperature and sort of mashing it into the wood a little harder and scraping off any excess. Now, unless you want your wood grains to show, just grab you a marker and fill everything in for some color match. 
Now I've got everything put back together here for another fit test and a function test. Let's make sure the sensor is going to work right now. So let's power it on. Hey, look, no yellow light. We're looking good. Now just test all over. It should release as soon as you let go with your finger, depending on which firmware you're on, you know. And there you have it. Now go get your favorite grip tape and throw it on there and go do some riding. Pat yourself on the back for a job well done.